You see this? We're gonna make this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get all our materials and cut it to length. So the first ones we're gonna cut right now is what's called part A. So part A and part B are pretty much the same. It's you take a two by four by eight and you cut it into two foot sections. Um, but they're gonna be used for different things. I wrote on each piece, now it says PA, now it says PB. Like I said, part, one, part A is gonna be used for in a different way than part B, but they're all cut the same. So technically I took two two by four by eights and cut them each into two foot sections. Now part C, we take a two by four by 12, we cut it into two five foot, seven inch pieces. All right, part D is you're just leaving two two by four by tens, non uncut. All right, part E, we take two two by four by twelves and cut them down to 11 foot, four inches. And those will be the bottom rails for the track. All right, for part F and G, you want to take your two by four by 10 and cut it into a one section of five foot, seven inches, and then two sections of one foot, nine and three quarters. All right, for section I and J, we're gonna be taking our one by four by eights and cutting one four foot, eight and a half inch section and one two foot section out of each board. So that's gonna leave us with two four foot, eight and a half inch and two um, two foot pieces. All right, now we got our last two sections to cut and that's sections K and L. So again, with another two one by four by eight pieces, you're gonna cut a section that's five foot and then, and then another section that's two foot, seven inches and a quarter. So you're gonna end up with two five foot pieces and two two foot, seven and, and a quarter pieces. Okay, so now we got all of our wood cut and now it's time for us to do the lap joints. All right, so all the half lap joints are cut. They're not like the prettiest things. And even in, in the book, it says that you don't have to do the half lap joints if you don't want to. You can just put the boards overlapping. I would, I would recommend it, but if you don't want to, if you don't want to spend the extra time, it was a little bit of tedious work. So now, time to start assembling. All right, now that we've got pretty much the uh, everything assembled, pieces assembled, now we're just going to piece them all together and make the bottom frame. Okay, so when hung, hanging the door, I had to make it a little bit more sturdy. In the book, it doesn't really explain much on the door, and I had to make a couple of adjustments on the actual frame piece too. There was a piece around here, I'm not sure why I was there, took it off, and then on top, the very top piece, right here, looked like it was right, it's supposed to be a here, but it's on top with angle braces. Nowhere in the book does it say to cut the angle braces, 
um, it just kind of shows pictures but make sure you cut angle braces and you're gonna use them when making the door too hanging the door you know, I've got my my hinges on up here I'll only put one screw in right now but on the bottom what I did is I used these two pieces of one by so I basically used a two by and shim the door up that way it's up off the ground it gave me a level piece and right here where I have the hinges I actually got a piece of it's like one by three it's a piece of pallet actually and I re I made that one by that's like over here thicker so that would be it would be even with the door now I'll put the rest of the screws in all right now for the pipe bin. Now you see here I've got my, my center line. Conduit comes in 10 foot. So you mark it 5 foot and then you come 5 inches off of there. Okay, so the 5 inch mark, you're going to take your pipe bender and this little arrow right here goes at your 5 inch mark. And then you bend toward your center line as far as you can go. It only goes to 90, so it'll go to 90 as far as I go. Now I'll create your middle bin. And then what I did next, created this little jig right here. The pipe sits in there. So that way all your angles are lined up. So once you bend, once you bend your 90, you set the 90 degree bin right here. You go to the very end, set your arrow at the very end of here, of your pipe, and you'll bend to 45. And then you'll take it out, go to your other side, turn your, your pipe around in your jig, and you bend like that. That way they'll all be consecutive. You should end up with something like this. It's not going to be pretty. It doesn't have to be pretty since it's a chicken coop. That's what your ends are going to look like at 45. Bend them all first, except for one long one, because that's going to be your middle, your middle brace. So you'll bend four of your middle conduits, and you'll keep one straight. Okay, so there you have it. Once you get the hang of bending the pipe and that little jig is a lifesaver. Make sure from your center line, you mark a five inch, five inches away from it on either side, not both sides, but on either side. You put your arrow on that five inch mark and you bend towards the center for your 90. It's very simple. So now we get to work with it and I'll show you how to, um, how to space it on, on the base. I went ahead and I installed two just to make sure that how I was thinking about it working it works so what I'm doing is I'm using my uh, grip clamps and holding in spot and then I'm drilling two holes in it and then I'm drilling it in now when it comes to spacing in the book it wants you to you put one up here then you measure <clears throat> three foot out which would be right here and then another way put a pipe here and there measure another three foot in and then you have your gap in between which is roughly four foot All right, so now that we've got those arches on, we're gonna take that last, the fifth conduit, and we're gonna run it along the top. We're gonna to take zip ties and crisscross them over it. Hold on. So between that, the chicken wire, and the tarp, it's gonna be pretty sturdy. And now it's time for the very fun part, and that is putting the chicken wire on. Now, it's probably easier if you have two people, because you know, chicken wire, it, it wants to roll back up on itself. <clears throat> and it also, if you have a pneumatic stapler, it hooks to an air pump, it's gonna be a lot easier for you too. Um, your hand's not gonna wear out as much. But the way it is, is you actually put a, a section on the front and then a section on the back and there'll be a gap in the middle and the tarp's gonna cover that so it's not that big of an of a issue. If it does make you feel better to put another piece, it's not, not that big of a deal if you do or if you don't. So 
I'm gonna get this chicken wire put on and then along the bottom, we're gonna do hardware cloth. Your chicken wire doesn't have to be like super tight and, and clean. Just make sure it's good and covered. Now, <clears throat> we'll work on the front piece and the back piece. All right, one thing it wants you to do on this corner is just cut those off. You don't have to. I just folded mine over and, and bent it around itself. And then on the actual conduit, I'm going to use the zip ties. So there's just no point in doing excess cutting save your hands all right after you get all your chicken wire on now you just get to go around where the conduit meets the chicken wire just put some zip ties in it all right so you have made it this far got your hardware cloth on the bottom got your chicken wire on top the door is done too now it's time for you to do the finishing touches you're gonna put your door lock on you put your little gussets right here at the corner of each piece, the front and back to give you stability whenever you're moving them, and then you're going to set your wheels up. Okay, now that we got the gussets on, it's time for us to shift to the back, and we're going to hit the wheels. So, how we're going to do the wheels, we've got our carriage bolts and nuts. We're going to measure half, an inch and a quarter from the back and an inch and a quarter down to get our halfway point where we drill our half inch hole. All right, so now that you got the wheels on, it's time for us to put the tarp on. Now it calls for a 10 by 14 tarp. That's pretty hard to find. So I have a 10 by 15 white tarp. So the 10 foot side's gonna go front to back and the 15 side's gonna go over just like that. And then we'll install the rope along the bottom and we'll be all finished. 